Let's carve a simple and easy acorn. You will need some wood. I'm using lime wood, which is a UK version of basswood. It comes in 1 by 1 inch blocks. Cut approximately 3.7 cm in length or 1.5 inch in imperial units. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a middle line. You can do it by eye or with a ruler. I'm trying to be a bit of a perfectionist here, but you don't have to. Then draw two diagonal lines on each end of your block. This is the easiest way to mark a center. We will need it later, so it's better to do it now while your block is still intact. Then let's mark out the parts of our acorn. The top one is for the stem. It's approximately 9 mm or 3 8. The second part is for the cap and it's more or less the same length. You can play with the measurements a bit, it's not very important. So I start drawing the stem, the cap and the acorn itself. This is just for better visualization. And I leave just a bit of space at the bottom for the small sharp point that you can usually find on acorns. By the way, scientifically that tip is called remains of the style. I'm not quite sure what that means, but here you are. Now, before we start carving, we need something else. Let's draw a little circle on top. This is going to be our stem. We will need to remove all the wood in the first section on top apart from that circle. But first let's continue all our guiding lines around the block of wood so that we don't get lost. Then I grab a knife and we can carve away. Make sure you wear your cut-resistant gloves, by the way, safety first. So, I'm making some V-cuts, defining that top line that separates our stem section from the rest. It's easier to do corners first, then you can move on to the sides. Don't rush it, go slowly. Cut into the wood first from one side and then from the other, creating a V-cut. Then you can just start cutting downwards, removing all that wood on top. Make sure you control your knife so that it doesn't slide past. So I go around approaching my circle closer and closer. I don't take too much wood at once, because this way it's very easy to make a mistake and lose control. I cut it first downwards and then undercut it with a stop cut to remove the piece of wood. When I get close to the circle, I make sure that my stem is a bit wider on top and narrower at the bottom. It will look better this way, rather than having uniform widths. Now let's do the next part, the cap. I start with small V-cuts, separating this part as well, all along our guiding line. I don't go very deep though, because unlike with the stem, we want to keep this part of the block. We're just going to shape it. After I went around the whole block, I started to remove the corners. Be careful when carving towards the stem. Don't apply too much pressure so that your knife doesn't accidentally break it. You can play with your cutting a bit, maybe you will find a more comfortable position where you are carving away from yourself. Thank you. 
I carve off the top sharp edges too, making a smooth curve from top of the cap to the bottom. Everything on that part has to be carved, meaning don't leave any flat sewn surfaces. I keep checking my work from the top from time to time just to see how round it is. I see that it's still a bit squarish and we want to turn that into a circle. So I keep removing corners until I have a round cap. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just I shouldn't have those straight sides. Also, do you see that I don't keep the sides perfectly vertical at the bottom? They kind of go inwards a little bit. This is just something that I figured out that looks better. I still make the stem a little bit narrow at the bottom, don't want to make it too narrow so that it doesn't break, but at the same time it's good if it's a bit more delicate, just like a stem should be. Now when you've done your cap, let's work on the third part of the Aiken. I start by carving off the sharp corners. The cap is something that will guide us and help turn the nut into a rounded shape.
but it wouldn't be enough to have the cap and the nut on the same level. The cap should be above, like a hat. So I will cut towards the cap and slightly under. I even out the rest of the nut too, and I can use my diagonal guidelines at the bottom for symmetry. Okay, done. Now we need to sort out the bottom. Let's round the edge. I'm going around the circle, cutting it off. Just like this. Now we're going to create the sharp point. Pay attention to how my hand curls, slowly making the bottom circle smaller and smaller. It should all come to the center of our lines that we drew earlier. I leave it here for a minute and then I carve off the edge again. It should be rounded, just like our cap was rounded on top. And then I continue with the point, making it smaller and smaller.
I'm doing both things at once really. I round the nut and work at the point. Also, I will be smoothing the sides, maybe making the nut a bit slimmer, so it's not as big. And it all comes down to a small point. The smaller it is, the more carefully I work, because at this moment it would be easier to just accidentally carve it off. If it does happen to you, you can create it again, it's just your acorn will be slightly smaller. So take a look here, compare it with another acorn that I've made. It is supposed to be narrower at the bottom, so it kind of tapers down. I'm going to emulate that on my new acorn and remove all that extra wood at the bottom. I keep looking at it from different perspectives. It's always a good idea to examine your work from all angles. Maybe put it down for a bit and then come back to it with fresh eyes. Anyway, this is the basic shape of our acorn. It looks unmistakably acorny already. A few things left. Let's get rid of that flat saw on top and let's round the edges. Maybe make the stem narrower at the bottom if it's still too thick. And now let's decorate the cap. Look how I've done it here. It has these intersecting lines. I'm going to draw them with a pencil first. It's just a bunch of swirly lines going one after another. Before drawing more lines, I will carve these ones first. Using the tip of my knife, I make some stop cuts and V cuts, making these lines visible in the wood. If you have a V tool, you can use that. You might find it quicker, but you can also do everything with a knife.
Right, I've done it. Now let's do the cross hatching. This time lines are going to swirl in another direction. When you draw them, make sure they intersect other lines. And it's the same drill, go over these lines with the tip of the knife or your V-tool. So I finished my acorn, I think it has a pretty cap. Now let's paint it. I'm using acrylic paints. You will need just three colors, green, light brown and dark brown. Get yourself something where you can mix the paint. I usually dilute it with water, this way it won't look that thick on the wood. So green and light brown are for the nut, you can mix them right on wood, this way it will be a nice interplay of colors. You can make your acorn more brown than green if you want. And then it's going to be dark brown for the cap. You can also add some light brown. Whenever you use two colors instead of one, your work becomes more expressive and beautiful. And this is our little acorn. You can place it on the eye screw and hang it on a piece of rope as a decoration or leave it like this. Happy whittling!